Hi, I haven't made a video in a while because it, and I've been wanting to test my solar oven for the winter hours and winter temperature to see if there's any difference. So today I'm going to show you a test run and I think I did something wrong. I'm just letting you know. So <clears throat> if you're wanting to watch a video on like a successful recipe or whatever, then scroll on to a different video. This is not your video. <laughs> Anyways, um, I haven't done, you know, it's now February and I think the last solar oven video I made was maybe October and it's just, you know how like November and December, there's all these holidays and then whenever I would get like a sunny day, I'd be out of town. We had a funeral to go to and, um, you know, by the time you get back to your house, there's a lot of overcast days in the winter. So unless you live somewhere in the western states where the, you don't get a lot of cloud cover, you probably don't need to try to be dependent on your solar oven for the winter months. You know, it's always good to diversify for just about everything and solar oven, just uh, don't make it your main source of cooking. It's good to keep some other things on hand. Make sure you have a wood pile, for instance, charcoal, things like that, just in case you have to make up a difference. So anyways, all that to say, today was, at this particular time, was 47 degrees, and it was very sunny, but the and the temperature never got over 55. So I thought, well, it's not as good as like, I've heard that you can cook in a solar oven in, in temperatures that are below zero, but, what I'm thinking is you're going to have to like stick your solar oven out as soon as the sun comes up and leave it out there until the sun go goes down to get any sort of whatever, you know, any sort of heat that you're going to need. Now I will tell you, I set my solar oven up and, um, you know, the temperature is like somewhere around 50 at this point. This was after like five minutes of putting it in the sun. So I got really excited because I'm like, man, it's heated up to 100 degrees in five minutes. That's pretty good. So I was really hopeful, but anyways. So what I thought I would do is fry an egg. Um, you can see my shadow on the ground. This is how your solar oven needs to be pointed directly at the sun. So line it up with your shadow like that. Anyways, I don't know if you can see there's an egg in there. And so I thought, okay, from other videos I'd watch for solar oven cooking, if you leave an egg in your solar oven for, I think, 30, to, 30 minutes to an hour, it should be done. 30 minutes for soft boil and then anywhere over an hour for hard boil. So I left it in for an hour and 20 minutes which after an hour and 20 minutes, you see that the temperature never really got over 140. But I thought, well, you know, maybe it's, you know, I think to boil an egg, it needs to be 150, 158, something like that. So I thought, well, maybe it did get that hot. And I just, this is me coming out at a, a worse time. Or, you know, maybe if you let it sit at 140 for a longer amount of time, it'll cook better. Well, anyways, I brought the egg in and I, it was hot, you know, it was hot. I don't know what the problem was, but I stuck it in nice water to cool it off uh, just so that the shell, you know, without opening it, you don't really know if it's hard boiled or not. They, they have that test where you can roll it on a smooth surface and if it doesn't wobble, then it's supposed to be done. Well, it wasn't wobbling, but I went to crack it and it was like it had not even been cooked at all. Like, so I hurried up and threw it. Good thing I had my frying pan in the, um, on the stove so I could just throw it in there really quick. But this, all this white part here is only because I stuck it in the frying pan. I had, like it was completely uncooked when I took it out of the solar oven. And that red sauce is hot sauce, okay? No, it's not blood, it's not, it's just hot sauce. Okay, so anyways, I just wanted to let you know that your solar oven will get up to 100, maybe 140 degrees. I think maybe the design of this Hanes 2.0, it's not insulated on the bottom. 
it's just plastic that's like that's shiny so other solar ovens you know like a proper like piece of furniture solar oven they're like these wooden boxes and they're insulated so I'm thinking that maybe even though the Hanes, even though this Hanes 2.0 is not reliant on ambient temperature for cooking, I think the ambient temperature does affect the amount of heat that it can trap. Because it's all these panels that you snap together, I think some of the heat is lost between the panels. I think it just escapes. Cuz you know, heat is expansive and it tries to get out of wherever it is you know cooling tends to contract things and heating tends to expand things so i think some of the heat just naturally flows out of the oven whereas when it's more in the summertime that heat and humidity i think it helps to maybe uh it uh, not insulate but but you don't it, it's it doesn't matter in hotter weather that this is just a thin piece of plastic but I think in the winter it does matter because you're gonna just naturally lose heat through thin plastic. So maybe next time if I were to put a bunch of towels underneath maybe or cardboard or something to insulate the bottom. But to me that's kind of a lot of trouble when my oven and stove work. So I think I'm just not going to make any more solar oven videos during the, these winter months and just go back to the summer months because, um, you know, if it were like life and death, then I think I would try to opt to, as soon as the sun comes up, stick something in there for dinner, you know, right around breakfast time, <laughs> stick something in there for dinner and just keep turning it with the sun all day long. Maybe you'll be able to get some kind of baking thing to happen. But anyways, I didn't get anything to happen this time. Oh well. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a great day.